We become what we think about. Say it again. We become what we think about. So what we're going to talk about today is how to be a great finisher. This is bigger than you all right here today. You have a child in the future that's going to depend upon your mindset of being a great finisher or not. Because I want you to think this moment, you're planning to build your family dynasty one generation at a time. I don't know what your circumstances are. My father had an absentee father. My father, father was a heavy drinker. My dad chose not to do that. So I don't know where you're at, but I'm bringing you to conscious today. We become what you think about, what your circumstances are, what are you going to do? How are you going to set up your, your kids, your grandkids, your great grandkids to be a great finisher? Bad things are going to happen this weekend. I guarantee you. Of the greatest finisher of all time is who? Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, they like him. They ridicule him. If they ridicule me, they're going to ridicule you. But he finished the race. Three little things that I've raised my boys by. Have fun, honor your authority, and be the best version of you. Life's about choices. My oldest son, he was in the seventh grade, played on the eighth grade team. He didn't get to play in. I said, that's not going to work. If I tell him to be mad, he's going to be mad the rest of his life. If you're not playing this weekend, you're a part of this team, and I don't care what anybody says. Everybody in here is a part of this team. Is the thumb more important? Is my heart more important? Is my pinky more important? Is my knee? Everybody's important. Everybody in here's got a reason to be here. You got to bring value to the table. Okay? You got power in your body language. Are you going to walk around like this? Call the mad. You walk around like this. Hey, let's go. Let's go. You ready to go? You ready to go? You ready to go? You ready? Let me see your eyes. You don't even have to play to do that. And the Word of God tells me in Hebrews 13, 17, we all need to listen to this. Have confidence in your leaders. You gotta trust them. You gotta believe in what they tell you to do. You gotta get all in. You don't need to doubt one minute if they're right or wrong. You just need to do what they tell you to do. Submit to their authority because they keep watch over you as those who must give an account. Do this so that their work will be a joy. First step to success is be obedient. And there's a blessing right there. So you have to make your mind up tomorrow. Do you want to have total submission to your leaders or not? When your coaches tell you to run a play, you better run a play. And what you got to do, you got to be so focused in on honoring your mother, your father, your coaches, and you got to beat that other team with that advantage right there. Trent, my son, plays for the 49ers. He's in his third year. But he was being interviewed during camp, and they asked him, when did you think of, start thinking about playing in the NFL, Trent? He said, but I really wasn't worried about it. I was too worried about being the best version of me. Be the best version of some are big, some are tall, some are little, some are fast, some are not, some can't, some don't. It's okay. And Coach Power said these powerful words. He said, if you want to be a champion, here's what you do. After the game, you go look in the mirror and you ask yourself this question. Did you do everything within your power to help your team win? Every single one. If you can do that, guess what you are? You're a champion. Because he said these magical words. If you do that, say yes you're a champion and he said don't worry about the score I'll take care of the score did you do something special that nobody else can do the simple stuff don't worry about who's going to win you worry about having fun honor your authority and be the best version of you and you're a great finisher so therefore you become a champion everybody round up in here